So this is your king valve. So if you guys want to know anything about your internal piece of this, you got two king valves here. This is your, this is going to be your evacuation port. Okay. So you just tie in your hose, you know, once it's past pressure test and you dump all the nitrogen, we already did all that. So we're just jumping ahead. So I really like these gauges. These are Navax. Um, I just think they're cool because they don't have the crank valve, it's just a ball valve. So it makes it a little bit, I think a little bit easier to do everything. So you always evacuate on your, you can evacuate from either side, but on mini splits, especially Mitsubishi's in, in particular, if it's smaller than like a three ton, you only got one port. So this is connected to your manifold and it goes to each line, okay? Which is your evaporators, all right? Don's got us the plug over here. Right there, Don. Everybody, Don, throw yourself on the internet. I want everybody to know who the, the guy that does the, here, let me see that. <laughs> hey guys, Jared, what's up? This is Chris. Chris. That's Don, he's the guy that does all the videos. Yeah. He's all the videos. One thing I do want to let you guys know <laughs> is do this, get it evacuating. If you're a tech, get it evacuating before you do all the other little stuff. So we're gonna run a little electrical circuit into here and then we're gonna whip it in and then tie it in. And if you look here, see how I did all the connections? I like to kind of like zip tie them and make them look real clean. And this is where you land your high voltage. So all these machines are 220 uh, volts or 208, 230, whatever single phase. Ground, L1, L2, it's real simple. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a very simple thing. I like to run all these in seal tight. Um, this is a direct burial line, so you don't necessarily need to put it in seal tight. I just think it looks cleaner. So I'm kind of picky about cosmetics. Um, get everything going, turn your pump on. Uh-oh, little cold out, little cold. See, see the ice everywhere, guys? Check out the snow. The cold, yeah, there's ice everywhere cold right pump, baby. You're gonna wanna open your evacuation port, and then you open it, then you open up your suction, and then see how it starts sucking it down? Yeah. Then we're gonna do it a little bit better. We're gonna hook this up. We're gonna turn this on. It's called a vacuum gauge. And this is what you wanna verify your microns. So right here is your service port. You just hook it right up to there, open it up, and you'll slowly start to see that going down once the evacuation process starts happening. We're just evacuating it. We're sucking all the air because obviously the pipes were going into the heads and the air got in there so once it passes its pressure test then you hook up the pump and then you start evacuating it down to where you get it below 500 microns see we're at 80 now uh, it was 25,000 now see how fast it's dropping yes. once this gets to 500 then what you do on your gauges is you close it off and see how high it goes if it jumps a lot if it jumps a lot then you might have a leak um, or you need to keep continuing your evacuation until you're down to your 500 microns. Are you gonna get to 500 microns every time? Probably not. Um, they, do, they do tend to uh, pull a little bit more deeper vacuum when it's in a colder temperature outside. So molecules in the pipe aren't bouncing around as much. So uh, that's pretty much what you're looking for. So once this gets to 500, we're gonna let it rip. We're gonna finish up this electrical, and then we're gonna get the thermostats done, and then we're gonna we're gonna show you the rest, guys. So this though, this is confirming that we're actually sucking the refrigerant down. Uh, yep. Next. All right. That's that. 2100. Does this make sense? So we're just sucking the air out of here and purging it. And we're getting it out and it comes out this port on the pump. So like watch. I'll show you this here. You can turn your your gauge off. And now it's just seeing what's in the loop. So look, see how it's climbing? Yeah, 44, yeah, 47. We're not, we're not deep enough, right? So we gotta continue to suck it down. Cool. That's all that. All right.
These ones are kind of cool because you don't got to take the whole thing apart. You just got to take this one little panel off. You know, in Denver, he's not here right now, but he always does this part. I really don't do this part. Looks like you are now. Denver, where are you? I know. We, we need where, you now. Where is Bubba? That will totally work. He's probably oh, having a good old day. Where and are you? Having a good old time. It's Sunday. You know, we are working on a Sunday. So not only do CEOs work on Sunday, they work every day. Only the real works on Sunday. <laughs> The other one come off so easy. This one don't. Jesus. There you go. And that didn't do that over there. And there is the circuit one. You plug it into that one or something over there. Bottom boom. That's it. Yep, let's turn it on. So you plug it into the little red plug right there. The little red plug. And then you tie it into your receiver. So it says success. So we know we're connected to that unit. Hit done. And then we're gonna do startup. Not installed. Central controller, yes. Fahrenheit, yes. Heat pump system. Yes. Auto changeover. I edit that and I put manual. Done. Saved. Monday through Friday. Yes. Disable. Schedule. Off. I like to turn that off. Disabled. Done. Residential. Yep. Disable lockout system. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Maximum heat. Nobody needs to be at 88. You know, you're hot, at, you're cold at 88, you need to go see a doctor. Right. I'll just say 78. There you go, done. Cooling, no, you don't want it to be 61. You don't want to give anybody the opportunity to turn 61. 70 is the lowest. Well, I'll do 68, done. 68 is the um, offset temp. We don't gotta worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about that, don't worry about that. Finish setup, select. So this one's done. Six, what are we? Or two. What is it today? The fourth? Fifth. Select. Use daylight saving time. 12 hour. What time is it? 1252, it's pretty much one. So, saving. That's it. Denver always does stuff it up in here. Top. Right in, right in. And up, there it is. See how it just kind of shoots in the bottom there? Uh huh. Let me just do that. That's what he does. There you are, guys. Pro tip. That's how you do it. Look at that cavity right there. Now let's grab the uh, side. All right. You know, the really good thing with these is you drop them real hard. Scuff them up, make them look a little weathered. Yeah. People love that look. And then nobody will want to take it. <laughs> nobody will steal it. Yeah, no one will steal it. No one's going to break into your house out here.
sure it's gonna line up right. I usually am off doing something other than what Denver does because if you have a good team, um, everybody doesn't need to be doing the same thing. So that's it. That's how you do that. Hey, Duckless Plus community, Jared. I just want to show you we're finished with this hyperheating unit. Um, it was a pretty tough little job. It was a two zone. Uh, it's an MXZ20 hyperheating unit. Um, we kind of got lucky. There was already a hole up there that they didn't caulk or anything, and you can kind of see how they ran their, their seal tight and all that, but we put a service disconnect out here for them. This is the condenser. You can also hear how quiet it is. Um, they're, they're really quiet machines. So the hyperheating units, they can do heating all the way down to negative 13 at a pretty efficient, you know, uh, amount of their capacity. You know, they do start to tank off after that negative 13, but uh, there you go. And you can hear how quiet they are, I mean, in the middle of summer, you'll be hearing your neighbor's mini splits or air conditioners just ripping, you know, not Mitsubishi's though, they're quiet. So, anywho, if you ever needed to come and turn it off, you just simply lift this, pull your, your uh, service disconnect and or put it back in or whatever. Lock it up. Here, here's the, the unit right here. So the lady's gonna have several people live in here. So we did not give her the remotes. We feel like when you're gonna have a tenant in a house, don't use the remote, just get an MHK2 thermostat. It's fixed, it's on the wall, it's there, it's permanent. Nobody's gonna take it and run off with it. Yes, you do need to put batteries in it occasionally when it goes low, but it will give you a low battery indicator on the screen over there. And Dom shows that one, so that one does this room. This one does this room. This is a little 6,000 BTU unit. It's uh, perfect for this room. A 6,000 BTU uh, uh, FS head is the smallest one they do make. So you can't get any smaller than that. It'd be cool, I think, if they did make a 4,000 BTU unit, but you know the engineering behind it is, it is what it is. And they do scale themselves. So it can scale all the way down to whatever BTU it needs. So a 6,000 really necessarily doesn't need all of its capacity. It can it can uh, drop itself a little bit, okay? But that's it, we just got done doing this. This whole addition of the home had no heating. So there was a fireplace here, but they removed it. You know, it is what it is. So, anyway, it's all cleaned up. We're out of here. Let's do it. Cheer it out!